should we start today? Did you? I'm just Kim. <laughs> Anywhere else Did you I see ten. that people have been breaking up with their boyfriends because, because of Barbie? Because they like the Barbie movie? <laughs> Actually, though, valid. Yeah. I, I just think it's a little bit of a red flag if men don't like women, like, driven content. It's not right? even... It seems weird. It, it seems weird if it... Do you know what I'm getting at? I know what you're saying. I think for me, it's not that they don't like it. Because you can, like... I'm sure women went to the movie and were like, eh, it's just okay. Or had criticisms. Like, yeah. even when you and I talked, we had some criticism for yeah. it. Even well, Farrell could it. be removed from exactly. that entire film. Yeah, it would be from much better. almost every film except for Stranger Than Fiction. Yes. I, I think, though, it's a red flag if they came away from it being upset. Yeah. About it. 100%. And I would 100% break up with somebody if they were upset walking out of the Barbie movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard, too, that there were, like, groups of people just taking their boyfriends as tests to it to see that's so funny like gotta... chris liked it so oh, there you go uh-uh. he saw it without me good for him yeah good for him yeah i mean you did see it twice it's true yeah yeah, yeah. um okay are you ready i am ready Should we get started hi i'm bridget no do that again <laughs> hi i'm bridget no 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 do it again. hi i'm oh my <laughs> hi i'm bridget no 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 oh do my it again. God. hi i'm bridget hi no, no, Maddie, welcome to Batty Breakdowns, where we hang out, have fun, and play games all the way to the end. Today, we're going to talk about Dredge. We'll give you the breakdown from its critical reception to its creation, and then we'll take you on a deep dive. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Into the game as we share our own experiences and opinions while playing it. We'll close if we recommend it, who we'd recommend it to. And last but not least, our personal rating for the game. With that, let's dredge the depths for treasure and trinkets. You are not allowed to do this. <laughs> I, I, welcome, I welcome you to edit the sheet. It is here. It is on our shared drive. <laughs> One day I'll edit the sheet. <laughs> okay, I have the game description. Yes, you do. Dredge is a single-player fishing adventure with a sinister undercurrent. Sell your catch, upgrade your boat, and dredge the depths for long-buried secrets. Explore a mysterious archipelago. Archipelago? Ar- ar- I think it's archipelago. You're probably right. I can't pronounce anything. And discover why some things are best left forgotten. Mm. Ar- I know it's not archipelago. It cannot be archipelago. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely isn't that. <laughs> not archipelago. I think it's archipelago. I can't say it again. Ar- Ar- archipelago. Okay, archipelago. Yeah. Archipelago? No, that's Kinda worse. combine the two? No, I think it's our mm. with the first one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got it. Yeah. Um, How it's yeah. made? Yeah. So I had How It's Made. Mm-hmm. I did not get lucky this time with a giant documentary that I could just watch. So that's a little disappointing for myself. I did find a lot mm-hmm. of articles. Okay. And podcasts. Oh, wow. Yeah, from okay. people that interviewed the developers. So you interviewed them, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely didn't do this today. <laughs> I was impressed by the rounds that I like that they were making because I searched like, oh, developer interviews, and there are so many. So we'll link some in the show notes, but there are a lot. So you should dig them up if you're extra curious. But TLDR, the game Dredge, released in March of 2023, so this year, year. and it was released by Black Salt Games, which is a New Zealand small indie studio. This is their very first game. Cool. And they only had four people. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I thought it was a very polished game. Yeah. Only four people. 
The four were made up of Nadia Thorne, the producer and CEO. She was the one who cre- kind of created Black Salt Games and pulled the others in. Joel Mason, who is the programmer and writer. Alex Ritchie, who was the lead artist and did a lot of the 2D art and the technical art. Mm-hmm. And then Michael Bastions. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but he was the 3D artist and animator. Cool. So very small team. Mm-hmm. Very impressed by the small team. The fun background of this little team was that they all worked together doing other like pay to create kind of game mm. creation with like a larger studio. And oh, like contract. Work, yeah, like kind contract. Of? Okay. Yeah, like contracting work. At least that's the take that I got. Okay. The Nadia, the producer, she wanted to like branch out and create a game and pulled the other with them, but they are still in good terms with the other studio, but they all kind of started together just in a different place. But the little group before, this is their very first game. They had, like when they kicked off the development of this game, they focused on prototyping first. Mm -hmm. And they actually didn't start with like, we're gonna make Dredge. They did, we're gonna make uh, three different prototypes for different games. Mm And then play test them, get feedback, and figure out which one to actually go ahead with. Mm. Which very smart. So they were they took play testing super seriously. It's how they mm-hmm. figured out a lot of the features of the game, a lot of oh, the balance cool. of the game, and the fact that they were gonna make dredge okay. at all. The inspiration of the game was mostly around they really liked games that were mashups of two things that didn't feel like they could go together. Mm-hmm. So they hadn't mentioned Moonlighter, which I still haven't played yet. Have you played it? It's on my list. Oh, okay. No, I've watched DK play a little bit of it. It's like a roguelike shop. Yeah. Like you sell your stuff in a shop and yeah. at night you go like dungeon crawling. It seems ha- up my alley. It seems like it had the vibe of a, quite a few games lately, like Call of the Land X yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. games where it really is just like two genres mashed together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that was the kind of vibe that they wanted to do here. I don't really know that they did two genres mashed together, but I think they mashed kind of the horror and the fishing sim, which is usually cozy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of the mashup that they had. The little bit that I got from the interviews were a couple of design changes and things that I thought were really funny. So yeah. these are more fun fat. I don't know. It was just really yeah. entertaining. So the first thing that they had talked a lot about actually in multiple interviews mm-hmm. was one of the hardest things that they had to do is design the waves. Oh. Yeah. So, like, not only how you move along I mean, the waves. I mean, they were really good. They were really good. Yeah. And they I actually are... actually noted that. I was like, wow, these waves are You took the good. notes on the waves. I, like, noted it in my head. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I did not do that. I, I felt, because I, I, like, when you would go over that. Yeah, like, they, I, that was really was smooth. Really smooth. Yeah, really yeah. relaxing, too, in, like, a weird yeah. way. I know it is a horror game, but it was really relaxing. <laughs> they had decisions that they had to make with these waves the first was to do the waves move you which as we'll get into later time is the thing that moves as you move across the sea Mm -hmm. so you have a limited amount of time every day and they didn't want people to end up cheating the system and like sit in one place and let the waves carry them out to sea so that time so that time wouldn't move so they were like okay no the the waves won't carry you anywhere and the other thing that i thought was so funny was they apparently at some point had to play around with the speed of the boat the height of the wave the angle of the wave and people were launching themselves like off, off the, the wave and they were like at one point you could literally fly <laughs> like you can fly in this Yee. game exactly and they're like we do not want people tony hawking on these waves that is not yeah, the point yeah. so they did they actually changed the shape of the wave to be actually less like nature so that you couldn't launch off of them that way. And they're like, if you can figure out a way to get fast enough, you could probably still launch off of them. Mm. But they were like, good luck, because we didn't put a button if you get stuck. So I thought that was fun. Yeah. And apparently that was not a thing that they fixed early. It was a thing that they fixed pretty late in the development process. Okay. So who knows how long you could launch off these waves, which I thought was That fun. is fun. Yeah. I like that. The other thing that I thought was really interesting, and I... We can figure out how much we want to talk about this one, but it was around the design of one of the areas of the game where they totally recreated and changed the monster and the mechanic. Um, And it might make more sense. Which one? The Twisted Strands. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's really interesting, but I think it would make more sense for everybody. When we talk about the Twisted Strands? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can hold that one back, but they did do some really serious design decision changes throughout the game. But the core of the game was always they wanted this 
overtone of this creepy Lovecraftian game on top of this cozy little fishing thing. And that stuck the whole time. Like, yeah. that's where they started. And, that's and I think they in. nailed it. Oh, totally. Totally yeah. nailed it. The last thing that I'll mention, because I did think it was fun especially since we both play stardew valley Mm -hmm. they had an actual goal that fishing should not be frustrating because that was the only part that they didn't like about stardew valley yeah fishing sucks in stardew Valley. it really does it's so frustrating i hate it and i love fishing in games i like love fishing in animal crossing i love you know fishing it's nice and like filling a museum and like collecting all the fish i really like it yeah but stardew valley is awful stardew valley is awful my my heart beats really fast and then i click and it's just a mess yeah yeah i've actually installed a mod i feel like i even liked see this is why i got stardew valley on pc so that i can mod i forgot you haven't modded yet not yet (sighs) Little, little baby. That is sad. Yeah. You should uh, let me know when you do it, and I can share with you my mod list. I don't know that when I have. I'm gonna have time. They have a mod list where you can ride Pam like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you can ride Pam like a horse. That sounds awful. <laughs> it is. It's really blurred. <laughs> That's really blurred. That sounds really blurred. <laughs> Yeah, I will. I will. Um, And the last thing that I will mention is just they plan to continue supporting the game throughout the year, and maybe longer than that. They don't have. uh, I saw their next update's gonna have boat customization. Yeah, yeah. They said they wanted to bring more DLC and all that kind of fun stuff. Cool. So people should anticipate if you pick it up that it's not an abandoned game and they're still working on it. But I will say I worry more about abandoned games when there are bugs everywhere and I didn't really find any. So, Mm -mm. yeah. I didn't run into any. No. It was really polished. Yeah, Yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so that's my house made. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, critical reception. Mm -hmm. Um, It has an 80 on Metacritic, which was a little bit lower than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, And an 8.1 user score. So pretty like consistent Mm -hmm. on the Metacritic side. A lot of the praise from uh, critics was around the atmosphere being really good, Mm -hmm. the Lovecraftian elements, and the well thought out like fishing gameplay. And then common negatives were a bit boring, story could have had more depth, Mm -hmm. and one person noted that it needed more horror, actually, and they called it low-fat horror. I would agree with that. And I would agree with (laughs) that. But that's why I liked it. (laughs) See, I I really liked this game, and I also could have used more, like a little more horror, I think. If Um, we didn't have this podcast, I would have used the setting they had to turn off pretty much the horror. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just because it would have made... I I liked the cozy part. (laughs) Okay. So there was a lot of... There wasn't any particularly funny Steam review that I found, but there was a lot of copypasta reviews. Interesting. So it's from a Reddit phishing copypasta, and there were so many of these reviews with this text. Let any fish who meets my gaze learn the true meaning of fear, for I am the harbinger of death, the ban of creatures subaqueous. My rod is true and unwavering as I cast into the aquatic abyss. A man scorned by this uncaring earth finds solace in the sea, my only friend, the worm upon my hook, wriggling, writhing, (laughs) struggling to surmount the mortal pointlessness that permeates this barren world. I am alone, I am empty, and yet I fish. (laughs) There was like... I feel like I just went to a poetry reading. Should I snap? (laughs) Negative Steam reviews, uh, same kind of thing, a little bit of a meh payoff at the end, Mm -hmm. which we'll talk about like the story later in more depth, wanting more horror. And then there was a few people who noted and compared it to Sunless Sea, which Mm -hmm. I had never heard of before. And this game is much bigger than Sunless Sea. Sunless Sea on Steam had like 6,000 total reviews, which isn't bad by any means. I have seen that cover art before. I've seen that. Uh, It's not bad by any means, 6,000 reviews total, but dredge has like 20 yeah you know it's it's much bigger and so Did i sunless sea come out first sunless sea came out eight years ago oh. 
So it came out a while ago and it's pretty intense from what I gathered. Mm. And I think it has the opposite problem of... Oh, to horror? No. The story is really great and everything else is shit. Uh... And then like people were saying Dredge was really great. Gameplay, really good. Atmosphere, all that. And and not that the art and stuff is shit. And Sunless yeah, Sea. Yeah, like yeah. I'm looking at it and it's really cool looking. Yeah. But the, the gameplay mechanics in Sunless Sea I was reading were really frustrating. I see. Interesting. So I thought that was an interesting comparison and I want to. Yeah, we should play and compare. I want to play it and compare it. I added it to my I like good list. story games. I think they're interesting. To talk I do about too. too. What, one of the people was like, "This is masterful storytelling with shit gameplay mechanics," and I'm like, okay. "Really interesting." <laughs> huh. The question is, are the mechanics boring? Because um, then you can move through that. Or it's apparently too challenging. Oh, okay. Interesting. Like, look at this review. Absolutely the best writing in any video game since as long as I can remember. Like, oh. everyone was praising the writing and the storytelling. Well, maybe we will have to add that to our list then. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm i definitely going to play this. But anyways, I thought that was an interesting find. Yeah. Yeah. From the reviews. That's definitely interesting. Yeah. And I guess as we go through it, if you're the kind of person who likes one or the other, maybe it's worth giving one a shot first. Yeah. Well, and yes. Yeah. So I'm... Let's talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Wee! Diving <laughs> into it. Here we go. First impression? You go first. I did it first last time. Okay, first, first impression. Uh, the ones that I had for this one are actually pretty straightforward. Yeah. I loved the atmosphere right away. Mm-hmm. Atmosphere was very cool. The mm-hmm. art mm-hmm. was so cool. It yeah, was like... like it painterly yeah i really like it wow it was really cool the 2d artist on this did an absolutely amazing job really good it set the atmosphere just extra like it was really Mm -hmm. good the other thing that i had and the only other thing i had was that dredge is probably the best name for this game and for a game like match that i've ever seen Ooh, it's so good dredge like when you say it sounds creepy like dredge yeah it sounds whatever and the fact that it's literally a nautical term and that's what you're doing yeah, and the whole yeah, yeah. entire game is dredging and you're like dredge up this stuff. Like, yeah. It's just such a good name. It really it's is. such a good It's name. really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm very impressed with whoever picked it. Like I dream one day that I could name something that good because yeah. I'm terrible. You're right. Because it, it also speaks to the story too. Yeah, it really does. I just thought about that when you brought that up. Everything Smart. connects to it. Yeah. Some more. I it's really like gameplay. It. Oh, you're right. It's so well named. Yeah. Easy to remember. Really impactful. Ooh. One beautiful. word. So it's really simple. Yeah. And snappy. Yeah. Ooh. Really good. You're right. Props. Oh my too gosh. That. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. fine. Yeah. Yeah. I had really similar stuff. The first impression that I have is also the music was really good. The music. I had cello. I'm a sucker <laughs> for that, as always. And I also thought that the controls on PC were really intuitive and nice. Oh, you played they on felt, PC? Yeah, they felt really good. Uh, moving around Switch. and kind of navigating your boat and the camera angles and stuff all felt really intuitive and hmm. good. And so I was noting, even at the beginning, wow, this is very, like, well thought out gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I to am... go with the atmosphere. Whereas a lot of the times I feel like we play these things like Somerville where it's so atmospheric it's so cool. and it's so such a cool, cool idea. and the yeah. idea is there and then the gameplay it just isn't. doesn't land. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think this one did. I'm glad that the PC actually had good controls because playing on the Switch, it felt really natural the way that you oh, would good. move joysticks around. So I don't know that I was like, Oh, this would work well on a PC, but it's good that it does. Yeah, because yeah. it, it would essentially you're like moving the camera and then moving the boat with the. It just felt nice. Yeah, I am a little disappointed. I played on the Switch, if only because it's apparently Dredge on sale this week. Oh, like, I bought it on sale in the Steam Summer Sale. Yeah, I bought it for full price. Well, you contributed to the devs. That's who, true. It's a small dev team. They definitely That's deserve true. it. Yeah, and for everyone listening, it is on sale. So. Yeah. Go buy it. Really. Honestly. Okay. So let's start with general gameplay so you guys can kind of understand Mm -hmm. how this game works. So we mentioned it's a fishing game. It's very much so a Lovecraftian fishing RPG. 
I think, for lack of better terms. I'd also mention it's pretty, like, like we said, it's horror light. Like, when we say Lovecraftian, it's like... It's got creepy stuff, but it's not, like, jump scares or a lot of gore. it's not, like, phasmophobia level. It's like a Lovecraftian almost setting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main way that they kind of sprinkle it in is the whole game runs on day and night cycles. Mm -hmm. So you are a fisherman, and you go out, of course, and you get some fish, get some trinkets, whatever, sell them for money, upgrade your ship, all those fun things. And the day-night cycle is really the difference between during the day, it's really straightforward. You go and fish, you get these things. Every once in a while, you get a really creepy fish. Mm -hmm. And then at night, you start to panic. Like, there's actually a panic mechanic. And then more creepy fish and more fish that attack you and creepy monsters that attack you. And that's mostly kind of the cycle that you play. Mm -hmm. It's just fish, sell, get panicked, go back. Yeah. Yeah. But dredge Dredge. materials to upgrade your boat. I was really impressed with how tight the core loop was. Yeah. It was really nice. I, so the way that fishing works in this game and dredging, I thought was really smart Mm -hmm. because it wasn't too easy, but it wasn't too hard. So the way it works is when you find a place to fish, it has little bubbles on the water that's like, oh, fish are here. Mm -hmm. And you go over it and you start fishing and it's a little mini game where there's like a timed type Quick wheel, time event, yeah, of, where it's like a thing spinning around in a circle and there's a green bar and you have to press the button at the right time when it's overlapping with the green bar. Mm-hmm. We've all played like yeah. puzzly things like that. And uh, sometimes it'll mix it up. Like sometimes it's a ball moving to a certain spot and you have to press the button for when the ball hits the spot or... It's a spiral that kind of goes outwards and you have to press the button when it hits the right spot. That's kind of the yeah. the general gameplay. And I, I thought they were really smart in how they implemented that so that it felt fun but not frustrating. To your yeah. point of what they were even saying of like we didn't want fishing to be frustrating. Yeah. Well, and you could totally fail at the oh, mini yeah. game, And all it would do is take you more in-game time. Like yeah. that's it. And that to me felt like punishment sometimes because I was like, oh, frick, I had things that I need to get done today. Yeah. Or, oh, God, I'm really far out and now I'm not going to get back in time. <laughs> yeah. So it definitely felt like good punishment, you know. Balance. Balance. Yeah, it was very balanced, mm-hmm. but it wasn't stressful. And the speed of the little like dots that you're clicking and whatever else were very reasonable. Very reasonable. Yeah. The other thing that I noted is at the very beginning, I thought that they did hand-holding about objectives and stuff very well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't super in your face. It wasn't super interruptive, Mm -hmm. interrupting. But when – so the other mechanics as you start playing is essentially you're filling out your encyclopedia with all the different types of fish that you can catch. Mm -hmm. And so you know that there's – I think there's like 69 possible species – I thought there was, was like a hundred and hundred and sixty. I don't know if that's true. I think it I is. Think you made uh, that up. I think it is. <laughs> Are you including the abominations? Or yeah, whatever? yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like it was a hundred and I want to say thirty something. Huh, one hundred twenty-eight. Wow. I'm gonna cut that. Where did you get sixty-nine? I really could have sworn there was sixty-nine You're not in there. To cut that. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it. So uh, there's an encyclopedia mm-hmm. that has all the different fish that you can catch, and there's 128 possible. Species. I think there's 169. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I I again, it scratches that like fill the museum yeah. itch that I like, and then you also start picking up messages in a bottle. I love that. Which was really cool, and that has little snippets of a story about a couple on their honeymoon Mm -hmm. that you're trying to piece together and follow. And then the last kind of couple mechanics is you have pursuits, which are your missions. Mm -hmm. So as you talk to people and meet people, they'll ask you for favors or they'll ask you to do something or blah, blah, blah. And then that's kind of your missions that you go on and complete. 
You can complete them for research points or other materials. The research points is what lets you upgrade your stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the core loop. And then the other thing that I thought was really fun and super smart was the reading. What do you mean by the reading? The books. Oh, oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. The reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about the messages in the bottle, and I'm like, technically you read those, but I don't know if that's how no, you describe it. There's yeah, a, there's no, there's a... Okay. Why don't you talk about it? Because I've been talking a lot. Get these books from different characters, whether it's because you completed a mission or you... I think you might have even dredged one up maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Or find them in treasure chests. Yeah. But you end up with these books and they have fun titles every Mm -hmm. time. And then you have to read them over a period of time. So you set them. And then once the reading is done, you can go and see like, oh, I get 10% more likelihood of not depleting a fish when I actually go and get one. And the skills stack, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. By the end, you're pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Powerful in the sense of fishing. But Mm -hmm. I, I did like that. You're right. I forgot about it for some reason. The mechanic we haven't talked about is the inventory system. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. I really, really like. Yeah. I think, so for folks who haven't played it, you have your inventory set up like a grid pretty much of squares yep. in an unusual shape. Mm-hmm. And then when you upgrade your ship, you have like certain slots that are set aside as, oh, these slots can be light slots if you want. And these can be engine slots and these can be rod slots. But they're also the place that you store all of the fish that you get and the treasures and stuff. So you have to be really careful about what you pick up, what you don't pick up, how you organize it. Yeah, because all of the things you pick up are different shapes. They're not Mm -hmm. just like one square. It's like, oh, here's this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, here's this hammerhead shark and it's got weird blobs going all over it. And you're like, great, I can fit one and nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I really liked that. Yeah. The only thing about it that I felt meh on, and I'm curious how you felt about it, is when you have slots set aside for like nets or rods or whatever, you can't move which square is used for those things. And I kept wanting a different configuration with the same number of squares. And it was frustrating because every time I upgraded, I couldn't have multiple big things at the same time exactly yeah actually that was like my biggest complaint with the inventory so the other thing to mention is that there's two different ways or actually there's three different ways that you quote unquote fish Mm -hmm. in this game you can do it via fishing rod which is what we talked about where you have the little mini game They also have a nets mechanic where you have a passive net that kind of just captures fish. So interesting that you say that. We're going to talk about (laughs) that. I did not like the net. I didn't use it. I didn't use them. Okay. All right. Continue. That passively catches fish as you're, you know, going across the water. And then you have crab pots, which are crab pots. Mm -hmm. And they do the the urchins, the, the crab, the lobsters those types of creatures that you leave and you check on them once a day and come scoop everything out of them and sell the stuff. But why I'm talking about it is you only have a certain amount of inventory slots. So what Bridget was saying is when she says that they were set aside for fishing and or net and or engine and or light is you actually like can't put those things anywhere else in your Mm -hmm. boat. You have to you like if you want to install a fishing rod that you can use to fish, it has to go where the fishing rod squares are on your boat. Yep. Similar to lights and lights are what helps you not panic at night. Mm-hmm. So the brighter the light, the less you're panicking. And we'll talk about panic mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. A little bit more later. But the thing that was tough for me is because as you start fishing and stuff, you also have different, the fish are different types of fish. Yeah. So you have to have the right rod to match with the fish that you're fishing. Yeah. So there's coastal fish, which need this kind of rod. And there's mangrove fish, which need this one. And volcanic fish, which need this one. And oceanic and shallow. There's all of these different types of fish that all need a different style of rod. And as you start upgrading stuff and unlocking stuff, the rods get more and more powerful and they have combined fish that they can catch. Mm -hmm. And so eventually you get this super dope rod that catches almost everything, but not quite everything. 
and then you have another rod that catches like your, all the rest of it. All the rest of it. Yeah. And if and there's only two spots that you could put rods on in the boat. So if you wanted to be able to catch every type of fish, you had to have just those two rods. Yeah. You couldn't also have the nets. Yeah. And the other thing on top of that is that when Maddie says you could only place it in there, it's not even like you could store it and not use it in the other slots. You literally could not have the rod on the boat. So you had to have it in storage, which was a mechanic that traveled. Like you had persistent storage. Which I will say is good. Dock. Yes. If I was have worried that, that at first. I wasn't using my storage at first because I was worried that it wasn't. It wouldn't follow me. Oh, that would be bad. I'm glad. They I'm didn't do that. glad that they. Yeah. Yeah. So it did follow you, but if mm-hmm. you had a situation where you were like, "Oh, I'm going to take this rod, and I'm I'm not going to take this other one, so I can't do any ocean fish mm-hmm. today." then you wouldn't be able to do that until you go back and get it. And in order to get the rod on your boat, you had to install it. And it took install time. And it was like four hours Mm -hmm. plus to install install these things. I had a few instances where I had picked it up to move it over a square and I still had to reinstall it. And that was like, it's not a big deal because time isn't like a finite resource. But it's still like... Annoying. It's annoying. Like, it's not easy to go switch rods in and out. And so you pretty much play the game with the setup that you have and periodically change it out. And I would get it if that was the beginning. But I was, like, grinding to get the most upgraded boat. Because I thought if I got the most upgraded boat, I could fit everything. But even the most upgraded boat... I could not have both rods in a net at the yeah. same time. I was pretty sad about that. I was doing the same thing. Yeah. I So I what I ended up doing was just not having, like I picked the net always, and then I had one big fancy rod on the other side, and then I had a couple of cheapy rods that I would sit in the extra squares so that I could get most of them, but not all of them. And I wouldn't carry around the, like, so the mangrove and the volcanic were both for very specific areas. I wouldn't carry around that You wouldn't just carry. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that makes sense from a strategic perspective. Yeah. But I love the net because... What would you do about the, like, abyssal? Abyssmal, I eventually... um, Because it was, like, haddle and abysmal and... Oceanic. All on one. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, I upgraded it to the small version of it, and then I could carry it around a little bit. Um, But that one, I usually... that was four squares, and you can't fit a net. I usually dropped that... Like, once I got late game, I would drop that one and carry the other one, and then I would just trade it out if I wanted to find a specific fish. Got it. Got it. Like, I just didn't run around to fish them. But I eventually got a net on my boat that could catch ocean fish Mm -hmm. and so then I at least get those and I really like the net because you just drive around and shit would just pile up it was so nice I'm like I'm just be bopping around and I have like 20 fish in the back and I'm like amazing I only did it because I noticed that you wouldn't be able to get jellyfish without the net the net is the only way that you can get jellyfish oh so I had to use the net at one point because I was like fuck this net thing I want to be able to fish everything because I was so irritated when I would stumble upon and find a different type of fish. Oh, and then you couldn't And get I it. couldn't get it. Yeah, that's fair. And so I was like, well, I want to be able to catch all the fish. And so by net. And then net was the only way that you can catch jellyfish. I am pretty... And I think there's a few other things that are only catchable via net. Really? I think so. Hmm. I never... One, I never noticed that. I also noticed i think and maybe i'm wrong here but i i tried to check but it seemed like the spots where fish were were the same yes yes so if you found a spot where you're like this is special and you don't you have the mark tool, it you can you could. mark it you and could. then go back to it a different day i just take so much time that's fair <laughs> <laughs> I did have to do that when I went to the first area. I the first area that I went to outside of the main like starting area. Ooh, which we have was the yeah. Why don't we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're gonna pivot and we're gonna talk about the different areas in the game too because there's five. Yeah, because you have your your main base area in the middle of the map, which is the Maro. The Maro. You have Little Maro, and then you have the the map. (laughs) Black castle blackstone 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 and that's kind of your main starting area that you chill in and then once you start upgrading a little bit more you can start to venture out and the first one i went to was the gale cliffs right 
Did gambling. you go there too? The I think it kind of you. kind of nudges you yeah. in that direction. Yeah. And I was like, in video games, you can always go into the waterfalls. And so I did. I'm so proud of you. That yeah. took me so long. That was like, that was one of the last things well, I did. Well, in, in, in Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, mm, that's where so many Google. hidden yeah. shrines are like behind waterfalls. It's such a video game So you thing. saw a waterfall and you're like in. Yeah. <laughs> I was immediately, I was, I was, I'm getting in there and I couldn't fish it, of course, yeah. but yeah. 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 Talk about the area. Why don't yeah. we talk about Gale Cliffs? So Gale Cliffs is the first little non-main region that you go to mm-hmm. mostly. Like it's an open world. You could technically go anywhere at any time. Totally. But game leads you there. Gale Cliffs. Oh, should we talk about the collector a little bit? Because I feel like that's the base of the oh, game sure. and why you're traveling. Yeah, yeah. So early on in the game, you get a collector that comes up and says, hey, you need to grab all of these different artifacts. What is the word they I use think he's for like, Does he say you need to or does he offer? I think you can decline. Can you decline? But then you're not playing the game. Oh, but then you're not playing the yeah. game. It's like one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Because he gives you the dredge. And so he sends you off pretty much with these hints on where these things are. Do you remember five. what's the motivation for you doing this? Do he just remember? says that he has a connection to them and he wants to add them to his collection. And oh, he's okay. called the collector, okay. right? Yeah. So he's like, hey, can you go? I can't leave this island. Can you go and find these trinkets for me that are special for me? And I'll give you a reward if you find them for me. Yeah. Why you're exploring is because you set out to get these five main trinkets right okay yes yeah and the first trinket that he gives you a hint on goes to the gale cliffs which Mm -hmm. is why you're kind of led there by the story Mm -hmm. the gale cliffs for me was my least favorite area Mm -hmm. and mostly it was because this little town what it is is like tldr there's two brothers fighting one's a whaler he makes bombs for you eventually which is nice yeah and the cliffs are these really twisty like paths within it where there's this giant serpent Mm -hmm. that is just there ready to totally annihilate you immediately. Yeah. And I didn't like it. I, I liked the, I was still liking the game, but I hated the serpent. And all I did was I did the bare minimum that was needed in order to get through that Mm -hmm. area. And then I left and didn't come back until I had more upgrades where I could like stave it off for a little while. Cause you eventually the collector gives you special powers mm-hmm. when you give these items back to him. And one of the ones that he gives banish. you eventually is banish. Loved banish. Yeah. Where you could just be like, press the button and then nothing could attack you like in this for a certain amount of time. Yeah. For a pretty short amount yeah. of time. And I didn't go back until I had that because yeah. it was rough. I, I didn't have as rough of a time with the serpent as you seem to have, but did you I not get did. hit every time? Not every time. I I will say that it gave you warning. Like, it would start to turn red. Mm-hmm. Like, your screen would start to turn red the, when it was getting... The cliffs would rumble. And the cliffs would rumble when it was getting close. So I would do, like, quick fishing, and then I would skedaddle, and then quick fishing, and then... I I feel move. like... I don't know if it's a I mean, he got me, but I never it? actually died there. Oh, you didn't? I died mm-hmm. there once. The actual... Oh, I couldn't actually figure out why he would show up sometimes and why he wouldn't. And if it was random, he attacked during the day, he attacked during the night, but a little bit more viciously at night. And I just couldn't figure it out. And so every single time I went in, I got hit and I beelined to the one place I was supposed to be in order to get the artifact. And then I bust my butt out of there, still got hit. I never died. But when you get hit, sometimes you lose like special things in your inventory because it'll like X out a box. And one time I had finally gotten, there was like a quest for this Rare eel. Fish. Oh, the eel. The that quest, happened to me too. Yes. And then he hit me and then my eel fell off the boat. And I was like, I oh, that have been happened to me too. so long for this eel. Exact, I was so mad. That exact thing happened to me too. Now I'm beginning to think that that wasn't a random event. And as soon as you catch the eel, it's like, yeah. It, it like knows that you caught. Because exactly. the eels are, because they only come out at night. So, mm-hmm. and they were only in this, in like one, one spot. spot. Yeah. 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 Those were those were tricky. Yeah. I really enjoyed the entry. Blah, blah, blah. I really enjoyed the intro that this provided to the larger game of the quaint stories of your yeah. you're repairing this brother relationship and you're helping this woman get this delicacy that she wanted and I thought that was pretty cute. Yeah, I liked that. And I will say that I did like the world building that they yeah. had. It was cute. I agree. Yeah. 
Okay, should we go to the next area? Which one was yours? Your next? I went to Stellar Basin next. Same. Okay, yeah. Okay. So the collector. We probably, I went there and then there and then there. Why'd you do that? I don't know. Oh, we'll talk about it. So we went to Stellar Basin <laughs> next because that's where the collector told you to go. Yeah. And Stellar Basin, mostly the thing there is a researcher. Mm-hmm. And that I liked re- her a lot. Yeah, she seemed sweet. Did you rescue the dog? Yeah. Because I never found the dog. And <gasps> I didn't oh. I didn't know that there was a dog until later I was surfing the subreddit and I saw some meme about this dog and I'm like, a dog? And then I looked it up and I was um, like, oh I my found the God. dog before I found the researcher. Really? I never found the dog. Yeah, so I found the dog. So Stellar Basin Basically. is a bunch of little islands in a circle, kind of coral reefy, mm-hmm. and in the middle of the circle is just a big pit, and we'll talk about the pit later. Yeah. But when I stumbled upon it, just the angle I went at it, the dog was literally the first thing that I found. I I got I must have gotten more. lucky. Like the first thing that I found because I was exploring. There's a bunch of stuff is along the, dog the coast. Or- I think area. it was around here. I went to these islands so many times. And it was where there was like a little tent almost. And so I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. And then it was the dog. And then you have to you have to give him fish huh. so that he likes you. That's and then, so cute. And then he can curl up into a little ball and you put him on your ship. That's and so I thought cute. I was getting a doggo. Oh. But then... But then you talk to the researcher and she's like, I'm so lonely. And then the thing that pops up was like, do you want a dog? And she was like, I would love a dog. That's so and cute. And it's really cute. Oh, I'm so mad that I missed that. That's adorable. Yeah. That's it's really, really cute. cute. And she has a dog for the rest of the game. And anytime you go and talk to her, the little dog is next to her. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I'm going to have to go rescue the dog. Yeah. Because yeah. I still haven't found all the fish, so I've got more to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the pit. Mm-hmm. in the middle of this basin is Cthulhu. I don't know. It's a huge tentacle monster. It's a giant tentacle monster. And I just assume Lovecraft must be Cthulhu. But who knows? I don't think it's Cthulhu. It's something. Because Cthulhu is like the all. That's true. That's like the god. You're right, you're right, you're right. And anyway, it's a giant tentacly thing. Yeah. And it just annihilates you. Yeah. So you have to help her build out this thing that's going to like calm it down so you can go fish. <laughs> Yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so the first time I went, I was like, oh, cool. I see like the little merchant boat across the water and I have fish that I need to sell. And I just started sailing across the middle. I just got yeeted. (laughs) Oh, just totally wrecked. So that was the first time I died, and I didn't know. That's it, kind it's of fun, actually... though. That's probably exactly what they wanted yeah, you to yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, there it is. Boop, boop, boop. You played boop. right into their tentacles. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you do not have time to escape no. at that point. Yeah. You are gone. That's you fun. cannot run away from that thing. It's so big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was a fun little area. I liked it a lot. And I liked the fish in that area because yeah. it was like tropical fish. They were really pretty. Yeah. Glow in, they glow in the dark. They were cute. Then I, I looked it up and all of these fish are based on real fish. And there is legitimately a glowing octopus, like a oh, luminescent cool. octopus. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I know, but it's cool. That is really cool. I was, I was looking it up and I'm like, what a weird fish to have included this glowing thing. And I'm like, it's real. It's Which is real. so cool. And also creepy and weird. But yeah. cool. Yeah. So next, apparently, you skipped one and went to Devil's Spine. So I went to Devil's Spine next because I saw it in the distance when I was doing the Steel Point quest. Oh, for the builder. I saw the, like, the, um, because this, the Devil's Spine, it, it's, um, it's like oh, Roman, Greek. It's kind of like Greek yeah. columns yeah. architecture. It's like ruins. ruins. Yeah. And I thought it looked cool in the distance. And so I just went that okay. way. Okay. Mm-hmm. I did not. I just, we can talk about Twisted Strand next. Yeah. I, I think it might be good too, because I think Devil's Spine has a lot of lore associated with it. it might be a little fun yeah. bridge. Um, Twisted Strand for me, like it's a bog. Like a swamp. That was probably dog. my least favorite area. Yeah, Actually, it, my person yours was Gale Cliffs, mine was Twisted Strand. I Although I loved the quest though. Okay, see, I thought Gale Cliffs was my least favorite because of this the monster, but it was at least kind of pretty. Mm-hmm. And it was really pretty. Twisted Strand was just yellowy orange fog everywhere and kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah. And the it was like catfish. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not exciting. No, fish. it wasn't. And the main like so this one 
which I thought was actually kind of cool and a little horrifying, was when you are in the middle of the Twisted Strand at night, the landscape moves. So it blocks your way as you're driving through. And I think that was probably the only moment in the game where I was actually scared. Scared. Yeah, because I was trying to get out and I knew the way out. And then it just kept popping up barriers and there was things chasing me. And I was going like my little panic meter was like going, going off the rails crazy, yeah. and I kept having hallucinations of things home and I'm like I know where to go and I can't get out but it was it was uh, probably the most fun like scare moment that I yeah had. yeah yeah. That, one. yeah that one was fun I I never ran into as bad of a situation as it sounds like you got into it was not great but I was being a little irresponsible I hadn't slept much and I thought I was you gotta just, watch that I thought panic I was jumping meter. in and jumping out. I didn't know that things would move. And then all of a sudden they started moving. It was horrifying. Yeah. But you said the, you like the quests and I like the, I like the little story that you do. Mm-hmm. So the story that you run into in Twisted Strand is you find a soldier or like ex-military person yeah. who has crash landed there and you help him get the dog tags of his fallen fallen crew or uh, comrades or whatever i don't know what you call them i don't know i feel like i should know squad squad Squad. great (laughs) they're his fallen squad and you have to go through the twisted strands and find all the different things and then he gets to give them like a proper send off and say goodbye and i thought that was really sweet So I did like the story of that one. I will say after the Twisted Strand was when I started grinding a lot Mm. to get the additional fishing equipment Mm. because I had made it all the way to Twisted Twisted Strand without a lot of the specialized Mm. rods. And I was in there half the time without a rod that could actually fish in mangrove waters. And that made it like I was grinding in a place that it wasn't good to grind. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I went for the boat upgrade so fast mm. is because I was like, I want to get that ultimate upgraded stuff so that I could just fish everything. Yeah. That was driving me nuts. That makes sense. And then you went to Devil's Spine next instead. I went to Devil's Spine. And Devil's Spine is these these really cool ruins in this volcanic setting. So mm-hmm. there's lava under the water that Which you can really see. really pretty. Really, really pretty. pretty. And you find a religious fanatic. Cool. And... <laughs> It's just one, so I don't know if you can call it a cult. It's just one dude. (laughs) That's fair. And you essentially do some quests for him to unlock this, this, you know, the trinket that you're looking for. Yeah. And I'm trying to not spoil it too, too much. Yeah, we'll get into the story here in a second. I think the only other thing I'd mention about this one is, to me, it was the hardest area. The little... Things. Piranhas is what oh, I thought. Of that. Yeah, they would just follow you around and they and would they cling you on slower. you. Yeah, and then the big one would get you if you were going too slow. Well, they. So did you notice the little things slow you down? Yeah, yeah. So then the more that comes, the slower, the slower you, you get, move, and then you and can't they do pile anything. on and pile on, and you can't do anything, and then the mama comes and like, in your toast. Yeah. yeah. And so that one was definitely the hardest area. You had to be kind of stealthy yeah. going through. I think I did die the most there. Yeah, I ended up... Not that I died that often in this game. I but... didn't actually. And the dying wasn't really that bad. No, like, you just restart at, your, at the last auto save. save. Yeah. yeah. I will say that here had my saddest moment of the game personally. Because I had spent, like, throughout this area, they have shrines that you're supposed to be giving stuff to. Yeah. And one of the shrines is two of these abhorrent fish, which we kind of talked about, like, some of the fish are kind of gross and diseased looking. Like, they have, they're called abhorrent or something. And you had to collect two. And I finally collected two. I was searching forever, finally got them. And it took me so many in-game days to get around the piranhas that they rotted before I that could is so put them sad. in the shrine. It was devastating. Aberrations. Aberrations. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but they were it, that was the saddest moment for me because I tried so hard and it's not super easy to find the aberration fish yeah there's like a little mechanic that at night you can see yeah. better where it but then you glows. have to be out at night and that's not my vibe Maddie <laughs> that was my vibe I was always out at night I was like ooh it's my favorite part I was like oh it's 1700 time to go to sleep 
I just, I, cr- I crave the spooks, man. I crave the spooks. I, I love the spooks. I played like the first, I want to say, two hours of the game not going out at night yeah. until I was like absolutely forced to for quest reasons. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, do we want to go ahead and get into the actual storyline now and the lore? Cause... Yeah. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to get spoiled about the story, which there is a twist. So just be aware. Go play it. Then come back. Yeah. The rest of it. Yeah. Do we want to start with the messages in a bottle, or do we want to start with yeah, your like that. story? Because that's kind of the that's kind of the build up. Yeah. Okay. So the messages in the bottle mechanic, mm-hmm. which we mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of them. Mm-mm. I want to say like twelve, mm-hmm. something like that. It's a really small amount. And the bottles start off really sweet. It's like yeah. this man and woman. It's written. The woman is writing him. Yeah. And it's about them getting engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really sweet on how he proposed. And they went out to the stellar basin to like hang out and like super sweet and all this stuff. And then it turns out like, oh, he's going to start dredging. And she finds it exciting because they want to find treasure, but he yeah. won't let her on the boat. And then finally he lets her on the boat. And they go out and they find this coffin and then the coffin gets pulled up and weird shit comes out of the coffin and then the fog happens and then everything kind of devolves into chaos. Yes. Really? Yes. Did you not find all of them? I guess I didn't see all of them because I thought it was, I pieced the story together only slightly from the messages, but then also talking to like the lighthouse person and Mm. like, other people i'm pretty sure so i don't you don't get all of it yeah but my understanding yeah my understanding from reading the messages is that we can figure out that these two were together the dredging is the thing that brought the fog and in my opinion um if you this is me hypothesizing i don't know if it's real to me those notes read like the woman died and mm. was writing them both before she died and after she died. Oh, interesting. That was my read. Ooh. That's my hypothesis. I thought it switched. So I thought it was her, and then, yeah, something had happened to her. Yeah. And I thought it switched to him. And it was... Oh, and interesting. And it was the husband writing the, like, crazy things at the end. Ooh, maybe. I thought that, that maybe she had died, and now it was, like, this weird mystical she's one with these monsters Ooh, in the sea. Interesting. And was, like, writing from the grave kind Ooh, of shenanigans. I, kind of I don't like know. I read better, but... I don't know. I was just reading it as, like, he was going crazy because he couldn't, like, save her. Yeah, I think that's fair, too. Um, but you un like you peel these notes back, and it's a really mysterious, interesting story. Mm-hmm. But it's not it's not in a lot of words. You get a very no, no, no. limited. It glimpse. isn't. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It is limited. I thought it could be more. Yes, I agree. What ending did you get? Because I'm hoping we I did got different ones. Both. Oh, okay. Because Which I did you do first. I did the good ending first. First, I did too. And then I did the bad ending when I realized that I had done the good ending. Okay. Yeah. I, so to back it up a little bit before we get there, a lot of the story is also, like, there's a lot of little side parts to the story that feel like side parts, but I don't know if they all are. So there was one side part, in my opinion, where all of these rotting fish are rumored to make you live forever. Mm. And the fishmonger that you sell fish to, and then like the dock worker that you deliver packages mm-hmm. to, are both eating this decaying yeah, yeah, yeah. fish. And I don't understand. Like I, that was one of the biggest disappointments I had. Was like this is that such a got it didn't. Yeah. It was such a weird storyline that these people were eating these gross fish yeah. and weird things were happening, and you find out that they're supposed to live forever, but yeah, then nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. Didn't pay off. Yeah, yeah. So they had, like, little weird Mm -hmm. stuff like that floating around. Um, And then they also had, like, this other storyline that feels secondary, but isn't. Of the mayor. Of the mayor. Do you want to talk about that one? So you find out, originally, when you first start the game of the morrow, there is a mayor. And you start talking to people, and then someone mentions how the mayor of Little Morrow went missing or died a couple years ago or whatever. Yeah, went crazy. Went crazy and, like, is lost yeah. now and died, apparently. Like, they they all think that he's gone. Mm-hmm. And 
you can ask about him to a bunch of people and just kind of figure out things about him. And then at some point, if you're doing exploring, Mm -hmm. you run into him. Yeah. I actually ran into his empty camp first. I did too. Yeah. And I'm surprised that I ran into his camp when he was there later. And I don't know what triggered it. I don't know why he was there once and not there the other time. I think you have to get farther into the game. That's Uh, what my guess is. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. The only reason... I kind of cheated. The only reason I knew that... Because I remembered there was an empty camp there. Uh Uh-huh. And the only reason that I knew to go back was when I was trying to figure out, like, how to not give the collector the last item. Oh. So... This is going to be a little embarrassing for me, but I never found the photographer. Oh. Yeah. I found her suitcase. Yeah. And I carried that suitcase around the entire oh, game. Oh, no. And so I was actually searching for the photographer. And, and then you found him. I found him. And I wasn't even meaning to go back to that camp. I thought that was her camp. I thought I was going to find the oh, photographer no. there. And so I was like, I'm going to go back to see if I can find the photographer. And then it was that old crazy dude. <laughs> I was like, oh. Damn it. <laughs> I'm like, Not who okay. I was looking for. I guess I'll get some story now. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So like we had said at the very beginning, the main thing is you're getting all of these really magical, dark trinkets mm-hmm. and you're giving them to the collector. And then when he takes them, it kind of pulses red and you get one of those powers. And so eventually you're almost to the end of it mm-hmm. and you have one last trinket to give him. Mm-hmm. And... I didn't want to give it to him because I had talked to the lighthouse person a little bit earlier where you mentioned, oh, I'm giving these trinkets to the collector. Yeah. And she was like, don't trust like everything that you see or whatever. So you kind of get hints like, hmm, maybe this guy's bad. Yeah. And I always in games, I'm like, I want to be good. I don't <laughs> want to be bad. I want to be good. Aren't you also the person who did the pacifist run the first time for Undertale? Wasn't yeah. that also you? I wanted to be good, and you can conceal the trinket as an option for the last one that you bring to him. And so I concealed it, and I knew that there was something to do to not have to give it to him. And so that's when I went searching and huh. had found, and then that's when I found the old, like the old guy who talks about the old mayor, huh. and he talks about the book. And that's when you become consciously aware of the book in the collector's hand. Yeah. Then you go back. Then you can conceal it, talk to him, ask him to give you the book. Yeah. So I did it really differently, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Because I had actually given all the trinkets to the collector by the time I had... Like, I hadn't talked to the old man yet. But when you give him everything, there's one final, like, are you ready to go? And I was like, no. Like, I'm wondering if there's going to be a battle or a thing that matters. So I was like, I'm going to go and finish up my game before I go to the final step. And I appreciate that you were trying to be good, but I wasn't. I was just trying to, like, go with the flow. I'm like, this is the game. We're going to do this thing. And what I actually thought after doing all this exploration was inside of the devil's spine, so the ruins, Mm -hmm. there was this big lighthouse. Yeah. And I wanted to get in the lighthouse because I thought... The stone tablet. Yeah, I thought that was going to be the alternate ending. I didn't know if there were. I didn't know if there were different ones. But I thought if I broke into the lighthouse, because there was something that you could find or read, I can't remember, that talked about the lighthouse being the thing that killed the monster the first Mm -hmm, time. mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if I can get into this lighthouse... And then use that to, like, kill the monsters. And maybe that's, like, a different ending. It was not. Spoiler Mm -hmm. alert. It was actually really disappointing. You just get a light. You get a really bright. A really bright light? But I thought I was getting a different ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little disappointing. So, like, I had done all this stuff. I had already talked to the old man. I was trying to get in the lighthouse. I had talked to the other lighthouse keeper. Like, I had done all this stuff. And it didn't click for me mm. that I, there was even another ending with mm. the lighthouse keeper and the old man. I thought I was on a different track. And so I didn't get the option to conceal cause I'd already given him everything. Mm. And when I went after I had run all around and done all this stuff and go back, I had another option and it was give me the book or yeah. whatever. And I was like, well, I already know that when I click the other one, it tells me you're about to end your game. So I was like, I'm going to do all my options. Yeah, so I yeah, clicked that one because it was new Got and it. then it was a different ending. That's so funny. That's yeah. so interesting. I thought 
I thought if you gave him the last trinket, that would end the game. Mm -mm. So I didn't want to give him the last one. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when essentially the twist Mm -hmm. is you grab the book, he's like, I'm not going to give you this book. And then you lunge to grab it and your hand breaks a mirror. Yeah. The collector is you. It's you the whole time. It's you. (laughs) Which is so funny because the lighthouse keeper literally talks like she recognizes you yes all the time yes and she and that's even, why she's like you fucking weirdo yeah and she's like you're gonna get the book she's like don't you already have the book yeah <laughs> and i'm like this lady's crazy <laughs> like this lighthouse keeper <laughs> she's on something yeah, you're know, like all these people in this town are crazy i didn't see it coming no, honestly i, I didn't, didn't at all i yeah. liked it though they have a spoiler at the very first story scene really when you are looking like you're driving the boat and yeah. you're looking down at the wanted ad for being the fisherman for this town the book is on your dash oh <gasps> yeah wow. at the very beginning if you notice the book is there you know the whole thing the whole time but wow. they had that in the demo and they had it um like they said they were worried the whole time they're like oh my god are people going to notice and ruin the actual game for people because it's in the demo Nobody ever noticed. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was the Twisted Strand thing? Oh, yeah. The Twisted Strand, uh, they were going to give you a harpoon. And then... Oh, and you would have to harpoon You'd have to harpoon things. things. Ooh. And they got rid hard. of the harpoon because they are like, we don't know how to do this without making it, like, first person. And they are like, it's kind of weird that we'd put a first person shooter in the middle of this with this harpoon. And they were, And then they were like... And also, what else are they going to try and harpoon? Are they going to harpoon people? <laughs> are they going to harpoon other animals? That introduces a lot of weirdness. Yeah, I agree. yeah. So it was kind of interesting because that's what it was supposed to be. Got but, it. Yeah, no. Um, good reminder. I forgot about that. Um, but let's talk about, so you break the mirror, you get the book. And then you give it back to the sea. And then you throw it back. Throw it back! You throw it back. Yeah. And then you get eaten. Yeah, by the leviathan. There's a rumor on Reddit that the Leviathan is a good thing and protects the good. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, because at that point, all the fog disappears. Yeah. And the monsters disappear, but then the Leviathan eats you. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. It's kind of like, but I, I liked it. It was kind of a bittersweet ending because, yes, he dies, but, like, his wife had died, too. Yeah. And. I did feel like it was very abrupt. I yeah. thought there was going to be this huge that was, like, final thing. was, like, I guess. But yeah, I I do think it was a little abrupt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get you. And you didn't do the other ending. I didn't do the other ending. Okay, so I had went back and mm-hmm. I did the other ending. So what is it? You give all the trinkets, and he's like, "Okay, come with me." And it's actually really intense because the what he describes to you, you're doing this ritual for, is to raise your wife back from yeah. the dead. Yeah. And then you go out to the place where you would either throw the book back or, in this case, raise your wife from the dead and do the ritual. So all of the different pieces that you've been collecting are all memorabilia from your wife. So it's her wedding band. It's her music box and key. It's the pocket watch watch she got as a gift for the wedding. And so it's all related to the wife, these things that you're collecting, which I don't know how I didn't connect those dots I I was reading. Because she talks about her pocket watch and you're like, I'm going to go get the pocket watch. I still don't know why. But you throw each of these into the sea and then your dead wife starts hovering <gasps> up and is super ghostly and the scene slowly pulls back from you on the boat and the dead wife hovering to see Cthulhu rising from the sea. Oh, what? Yeah, so you awakened both your wife, I guess, and Cthulhu. I don't know. Oh, if that you're... sounds sick. It was pretty cool. Damn, I'm going to watch that. Cool. You should. It's really easy. You just go back. When you go jump back into your game, it just starts you over from the last save. It starts you over from the last save. Yeah. Cool. So you can just give them the last thing and do the scene because it's really fast. Yeah. Um, but it was really epic because now I have so many questions of like, did the wife like actually live when you resurrect them was the wife tied to cthulhu and by raising the wife you raised cthulhu yeah, was cool. the, like that's why i thought the bottles were her because the bottles were trying to get you not to to do this and throw the book in the sea and so i was like maybe the wife knew that cthulhu would come up i don't know but either way it was super cool it was a very visually fun scene too. yeah yeah but then that's the end you nice. reawaken cthulhu and i uh over the credits instead of a nice beautiful town it's a town burning with like all hell has broken loose it's like amazing you, you killed everybody oh that's so cool yeah though. it was a really cool ending 
Dang. Yeah, I'm going to go play that one. Yeah. Cool. I still am disappointed there wasn't a lighthouse ending. And if somebody knows the developers or developers, if you listen to this as a DLC, could you please make the lighthouse a different ending? Thank you. Yeah. 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 I get it. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Do we want to do our wrap up thoughts? Yeah. Wrap up. Go for it. So for me, Mm -hmm. I was super entertained the Mm -hmm. whole time. Me too. I got through it in about 12 hours all on the same day because I am crazy. Yeah, you like, I, I thought I was doing good. I texted Bridget. I was like, I'm playing. (laughs) I'm doing good. She texted me on multiple platforms to be like, I'm playing this game. (laughs) It's really fun. How's your little intern thing that you're doing? I hope it's good. I'm over here playing video games. And then then Bridget texted me the next day and she's like, I finished it. I was like, the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> i i just got really into it yeah and it was really fun i thought the mechanics were super smooth i am one of those people that i'm like i wish the story would have doubled but it's because i thought it was interesting and yeah. cool it's not because it was lame it's just i wanted more of it i wanted more yeah mm-hmm. and so i don't know how much of a criticism that can even be mm-hmm. i do wish there was more but i enjoyed myself the whole time and really thought that it was a very smooth game, mm-hmm. a game that knew what it was, mm-hmm. a super clear concept. Um, and if I was going to like recommend it, I would recommend it for folks. I would say it's really not that scary. No. And they do have settings to make it less scary if you really don't want that and you just want to fish. Um, so all of that is something that is easily overcome. If you do really like horror and want a horror game, it's not really that. No. But it is a really relaxing, kind of calm game, to be honest really smooth. I like the story and the setting and would recommend. I think waffling back and forth. I waffled between I wish I could give it like a 3.5. Oh. I really liked it. I think I would give it a 4 if the ending had been as satisfying as I had wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. But the lighthouse kind of killed it. Mm-hmm. And I For think mm-hmm. I think if I hadn't gone in the lighthouse, I would have said 4. And then having gone on the lighthouse trip and then being disappointed and then the ending being so abrupt immediately after that yeah. really felt less good to me. So I want to say 3.5. I don't know that. I think it's better than a three. Yeah. So whatever. I'll figure out what to do on the website later. But maybe, I don't know, 3.5, 4. I, it's not a three. It's more than a three. Out of? Um, we're going to say 3.5 yeah. aberrations. Nice. Yeah. And then I'll figure out what to do on the website later. Maybe it's a four. Maybe I'll end up just putting a four on the website because I really can't put a three in good conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, this is like right up my alley. I love fishing. Like I said, in games, I really like horror stuff. So it was just directly my shit. And I had a ton of fun. Like this is, I have been kind of mid on the games that we've been playing lately. Mm -hmm. I did like Diablo for a spell, but I burned out on it super quick. And even like, like Tears of the Kingdom, I really love, but I just don't have time for it right Mm -hmm. now. And so I found myself playing Tears of the Kingdom and it felt like a chore Mm -hmm. versus having fun. So I've also kind of put that down for a little bit until I can come back to it with like a better mindset Mm -hmm. because I'm just so busy in life and you just have to have time to like dedicate to that game to really play it. And so this was like the most fun I've had in a couple of games that we've played, which I really liked and really appreciated. And I... And so I, I really loved it for that. And I just thought everything came together really polished. Yeah, I agree. And I do recommend it for most people. If you are a huge baby, <laughs> don't play it. It's true. If you've ever played the board game Betrayal at House on the Hill and you were scared of that, don't play this game. Yeah, I would say that is an equivalent amount of spook. Yeah. I have been describing this game as spooky, not horror. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But if you can't not, if you cannot do spooky even, yeah. not for you. It's also a little grotesque in some places. So. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Cuz the little ab- aberrations can be kind of weird. Yeah, and like, it can be a real creepy. Yeah. yeah. A little creepy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I really liked it. I agree. I wish there was more to it. I want more side quests and yeah. more 
but story. Is that really a bad thing though? And You're I like, don't I think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I want I wanted more, and I think I I originally was waffling between a four and a five because Ooh. I had so much fun. Oh, Maddie. I ended up going with four. I think okay. I would have gone four point five if we could do halves, but. <laughs> One I one day we'll we'll get halves and I I think that the only reason I'm not doing five is just because the the I just the ending wasn't quite like yeah it's like I wasn't snappy. like um like oh my blown gosh. away mm-hmm. you should watch the other ending let me know if that feels different yeah. I still think that both didn't give that for me but I do think the other one was cooler yeah 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 I I will play that and and let you know but mm-hmm. but I still think it's really good game I know that it'll be like one of my top for this year yeah I really really yeah. liked it it was a very cool game mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I oh four out of five I yeah. put trinkets because I'm boring that's nice <laughs> get your little trinket i couldn't think of maybe maybe a dogs okay that's no nice. lost dogs lost no. dogs no that's not really the that point of the game sad. you don't want four lost dogs i don't want four lost dogs four found dogs maybe like monocles because you find those little like broken monocles like should i do a specific you do trinket? you never found a monocle no like a monocle trinket no oh oh they have like a little broken monocle i found sunglasses yeah they have those too I'll just do trinkets. Okay, just trinkets. Yeah. Yeah, basic. I'll be, I'll be basic. <laughs> I'll be basic. That's nice. Yeah. Should have picked like a funny fish, but I can't think of one right now. I don't remember their names. Me neither. I looked up some of I them. did really love finding all the fish, and I think I'm yeah. going to go back and try to catch all of them. The fish art was also really good. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Would recommend. I think I'm only up to like 90 fish caught, so I've still got quite a few left. And I have no idea where to find them. I feel like I've been everywhere at this point. But I, I still haven't found the dog, and I still have the photographer, so clearly I yeah, effed yeah, yeah. up somewhere. Yeah. It's yeah. like the weird unmarked islands that you yeah. forget that you go to. You can get turned around pretty easily in this game. Yeah, for sure. Which is really similar to real life being, like, yeah, on the on ocean. The yeah, yeah. That sounds right. It sounds realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked it, though. Yeah. Um, Off topic... I started watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. For the I, first did time in my life. Oh, I did too. I did too. What? I did too. Why are we the same person? I have to edit that. I was so loud. I'm so sorry. I did too. Look at the waves <laughs> on that thing. Look at the sound waves. That's so funny. Yeah. I literally just started it a couple of days ago. Yeah. I I just I have finished a few episodes. two episodes. Yeah. 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 How okay. are you liking it? I've never watched it before. I have also never watched it. I am confused and concerned about the vampire makeup that they use. <laughs> But it's the 90s, It is the 90s, but I'm used to hot vampires, Maddie. (laughs) I grew up in a hot vampire era, and then I I turn on the show, and I'm expecting, like, vampire diaries. It ain't hot vampire. And instead, I get these weird unibrow They're very caveman. They're very... That's a great word They're very caveman. Yeah, yeah. So, I was very shocked and surprised that there were no glittery hot vampires. I'm like, what kind of show is this? That's so funny. That is so funny. I I like it so far. It's a little, um, I can see why it's like one of the most popular yeah, shows. Yeah, for sure. And I think that I'm excited to see where it goes. I think it's maybe a little slow to start, mm-hmm. like a little bit. Yeah. But I think as the characters build, right now my favorite character is like the nerdy friend. Yeah, I and I'm forgetting her name. I I don't know any names yet. The, just Buffy. Yeah, it's in just the title. Buffy. Yeah, just Buffy. <laughs> really hard to forget that. One. I would agree that it starts off a little slow, but I heard that Buffy was one of the shows that really made Monster of the Week super popular, hmm. or like maybe not Monster of the Week, but like the. Uh, like the serial, like there's this little thing that they have to fix each week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was one of the reasons I was interested in watching it is because I had They're heard, kind of yeah, packaged in an episode. Exactly, and I had always heard about it. And we just finished so many of our shows. We're still trying to make it through Black Mirror, but that takes time and mental energy. So I, I was like, we Buffy. lost Netflix access because it's my parents' Netflix. Uh, I'm so. still on Chris. I lost my parents cancel Netflix out of um, anger. Yeah. They're like, this is stupid. We, yeah. I need to push my parents on canceling because I think they're watching this show on it. But yeah. Yeah. 
I have to have, how do you watch Bridgerton? I watched it before I lost access. Did you watch Queen Charlotte? Yeah, that was before I lost I, I don't know when you like lost months access. Months ago. I don't know when you lost access. I, I mean, they just did that. Okay. I don't know. They my, just my parents, started cutting people off like like a month or two ago. My parents canceled when it was announced because they were mad. And they were hoping that by canceling, oh, they, did they wouldn't they do it. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, went, I didn't have it with them for a long parents? time. I know, right? Oh, wow, yeah. proud of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fighting, fighting the man. Fighting <laughs> capitalism. I yeah, love it. But they still did it anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, fun. it sucks. I, I, I finished Never Have I Ever, thank God. That's a good one, yeah. Before, because the last season just came out. Well, when the next Bridger comes out, we have Bridgerton movie night. Oh, good. Okay, yay. Yeah, I would love that. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, I would love that because I don't have access <laughs> anymore. I was thinking that when Stranger Things or when Bridgerton comes out, I'll subscribe for like a month yeah, that's and then fair. cancel. That's fair. But I, I would rather hang out with you. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Okay, what were we talking about? The vampires! <laughs> Buffy! So I, I get why it's such a, like, I, I can see that it's building. Yeah. I think just, I've only watched the first two. Yeah, I have, so, like, I literally, I don't even know if I've made it through two yet. I have at least watched one and a half, but I think I got interrupted. I don't even know if I've seen the end episode. Okay. Yeah. And I like it. I like it. But yeah, you're right. The vampires are uggos. I know. And I, I <laughs> in the middle of like the first episode. She's cute though. I was, she And her she friend is cute. is cute. I was searching through and I was like, do these get better? I was like, season five yeah. vampires. And I was like, please God. I think there's like, I know that there is a vampire that, sh- that ends it's up being on be, their side yeah. and is like supposedly hot. That's what I, Angel? Is that the one? The one that gets a spinoff? Or is that different? I feel like I've heard the name Spike. Oh, maybe. But I, I, I literally be... know nothing. No, me, me neither. I know nothing. Yeah, listeners, I'm so sorry <laughs> if this like, is like your oh, favorite show. Cringe. Like... <laughs> cringe. <laughs> we're, we're really cringe. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. But I, I like it's a How I Met Your Mother, Lily. Oh, right. Yeah. And I haven't seen how, you're, how You Met Your Mother in a long oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's been a long time. Well, that's just time. how I know her. Because that was the first thing I, I saw knew with her. I her from... Um, What's the band one where she's the American horny band Pie. geek? Yeah, that one. <laughs> that's what I saw her in first. Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. Fair. Um, yeah, well, that's good. fun. She's I can't believe actress. you also started just watching it. That's that hilarious. is really funny. Same brain waves happening. Well, now I think I feel obligated to continue watching it so that I can check in and see. Yeah, we can we can both keep watching it. Yeah. And can continue to check in on this podcast, even though people probably don't want our opinions anymore <laughs> on Buffy. <laughs> You're not hot enough. <laughs> Me. I, that was honestly my complaint. Yeah. <laughs> but it's valid. <laughs> okay, ready yeah. for the ending? Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and rate it. For those of you that already have, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. We look at everyone and we, we get so excited every time. Yes. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Baddie Breakdowns. You can visit our website, baddiebreakdowns.com, made by me, Bridget Keen. The podcast art was done by the lovely Tanisha Vernicar, and the podcast was edited by Maddie Wisnott. Join us next time to hear us two baddies break down Oxen Free 2. Woo! It was on my top five anticipated. It was. For the year. So yeah, Mine was a fail. Yours. <laughs> Rest in peace, Redfall. <laughs> R.I.P. Redfall. What an <laughs> L for me. <laughs> Sad. But hopefully this one will be good. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye. Yay. Bye.